Hi Year 5, welcome back. Looking forward to sharing with you all of the learning for week 13. Hope you're all really well. It's been fantastic to receive all of your emails uh, and we hope you enjoy the learning we've got prepared for you this week. Okay, so here I am on the Google Drive with the explanation of tasks ready and open for you. And I'll start straight away with our maths learning this week. Um, again, a little bit like last week, we have already completed the main tasks on the White Rose website. There are some links on there, but we've put them all here for you as well. Um, so this week we've got lesson one, all about multi-step addition and, subtra and subtraction problems. You have to read the word problems, work out exactly what it's asking you to do. Um, and you can draw pictures and you can use then some of the tools down here from MathSpot to help you like bar modeling. Um, and you need to try and solve the different maths problems. Uh, lesson two, three and four are all about line graphs this week. Um, we haven't done line graphs since the autumn term. Um, so it'd be good, really good revision for you to go back through um, and to have a go at these tasks this week. Uh, follow the links to give you some excellent guidance on how to complete the different um, worksheets which are all saved onto our Google Drive. Um, don't forget as well, you've got IC Maths here. Um, so there's more opportunities there for problem solving as well as the White Rose Friday challenge as well. Um, finally, when you go into the Maths folder this week, you will also find, as well as all the White Rose worksheets, um, a little extra challenge for you, which is the mystery of the Winning World Book Day costume. And to solve the mystery, you've got to solve a whole range of different maths problems. So you've got the, all the different people, the different suspects and their descriptions here. And then you have to look through the clues um, and work out who it could possibly be from each of the different clues. Lots and lots of different maths that you can have a go at practicing there and all the answers there at the bottom as well. Okay, this week then for our English learning, we are carrying on with There's a Boy in the Girls' Bathroom. We have received absolutely fantastic learning from you all about this. Um, and it's been fantastic to hear how many of you are really enjoying reading the story. Um, this week, OK, we're learning even more about Bradney as he's chatting to Carla. We're looking at chapters 20 to 27 this week. And for the PDF, that starts on page 89. Um, as you're reading, um, be ha have in mind your writing task is going to be to write a letter to Bradley as Carla. Um, she offers him some advice on what he can do to stop seeming like such a monster to everyone else. Um, so have a good look through the PDF. Um, it's got lots of short tasks to take you through and to have a careful think about, um, which will all help you build up into doing your final writing task at the end. OK, you can just do a little bit each day um, and eventually then we'd love to see your letters when you have written them. Uh, keep thinking about the different English skills you could include. And so many of you are thinking very carefully about these in the letters that we receive in our email. Brilliant different sentence openers. There's lots of opportunity here for emotive language, uh, really making sure you're showing the different ways that the characters are feeling. And then. Um, don't forget, make sure each of the points that Carla is raising and giving to Bradley's advice are explained really clearly and each new point can be written in a new paragraph. You will see when you go into the English folder that the three audios are there and the PDF of the book, as well as the PDF of our PowerPoint of learning ideas for you. Um, and as you go through, you've got all those steps there. Maybe have some paper handy because you can be jotting things down as you go. Um, and there is here for you an example of a letter. OK, it's so an example of the task that we're asking you to have a go at. And you can take ideas from here. Remember to eat a little magpie and okay, steal some of the ideas that you really like. Look at the different starters we've used. Um, think about different punctuation. OK, we've got a colon here. Think about how we're adding extra detail. Um, think about then maybe where you might ask a question. Um, how you might include a little bit of speech. We've tried our best to try and squeeze lots of different things in and give you lots of different ways that you could have a go at doing something similar. OK, got the checklist there um, ready for you. Um, and then there are some guided reading questions at the very bottom as well. Um, as the answers are just below. OK, so you can check them after you've had a go. 
Um, as well as that, then, for your reading, as usual, we have got two different comprehensions for you. Um, we've got one which just looks like the normal comprehensions, and you've got the one, two, and three star options. And you've got this one up here as well. We've got a one star option. And if you'd normally do the two or the three star option, you can have a go at this one. Um, it just looks slightly different this week um, as it is a piece of non-fiction writing there. And the questions are there and the answers at the bottom as normal for you. Uh, the rest of our English learning then is, of course, our spelling and our spag. In the folder, you'll see things which you're really used to. So you've got the normal spag activity mat and the normal Mr. Whoop spelling. This week, you've also got your mini spag tests. OK, just something just to keep you going, keep you sort of thinking through all those different skills that we're practising when we were in school. And read the questions really carefully. Um, different things there about pieces of punctuation. Some things which you'll feel really comfortable with. Some might be a little bit tricky if you've forgotten what anything means. Remember, you can look it up on the Internet. You can always send us an email if you're not sure about something um, and see how you get on with your questions. Um, there's also then our little spelling PowerPoint talking through prefixes and suffixes. Um, and this is something just a little bit like. Um, the learning we would normally do in our spelling lesson and it's got little tasks in there and the answers okay for you to have a look at okay so now um, thinking about the rest of our learning this week uh, let's open up our science folder um, and this week we're thinking about getting older and the first question we have for you is what age do you consider to be old uh, and it's quite an interesting question and there is no specific right answer. Uh, we had a go as um, a team at Harrison uh, with our families and friends as well, um, answering that question. And you'll see there is a whole variety of different responses to this question, right from 21, um, all the way up to 100 or older. Um, but people had found it quite a range. Some people said it's very easy. Some people said it was quite difficult. So you have the opportunity, if you click the link here, it will take you to our survey uh, for growing up and growing old. Uh, it's completely anonymous, uh, but you need to just tell us what age do you think someone becomes old? Um, and you could have a go at it, your parents, grandparents, younger siblings, older siblings, or you could ask um, other children, other adults that you know to have a go, just so we can collect loads and loads of data and just try and get a bit of a general idea. What age is old? Uh, the rest of the learning in science this week then um, does talk about what it's like to get older, uh, some of the things that might happen. You've got some draw false categories um, to kind of move these cards into um, and some of them are really hard. Some of them there's no definite real answer to, but you just need to think for yourself. Do you think these are true or false? Lots of information to read. Um, and one of the tasks then is a reading comprehension, which links to the information on these two slides of the PowerPoint. Um, or you could also have a go at creating your own top tips page or video uh, all about surviving old age, using all the things that you have found out. Uh, but we'll share the results with you uh, from the survey next week. Uh, the other learning you have this week, then you have got some geography all about mountains. Um, and you'll see there are three different tasks you can have a go at um, and a PowerPoint to talk you through. Um, and it's all about uh, different mountains in the UK um, and areas of higher ground, so hills as well, and how these are shown on maps using contour lines. Uh, your first task is all about locating different UK mountains and hills. Um, your second task is somewhere for you to have a go at building your own sort of contour map. And the third one is making a map of a potato, which might sound a little bit strange. If you read the task, um, it will make more sense. Uh, but you can see here the potato has been cut in half to make it look a bit like a mountain um, or a very large hill. And then through cutting off different layers of the potato and drawing around it, you create the contour lines, which are these lines here. It'll make a bit more sense once you've read through the whole PowerPoint explanation, but we'd love to see the pictures of your potato and your finished potato map um, if you do have a go at this task. 
Um, please remember if you do have a go at that task though, um, you will be using quite a sharp knife probably, so you must make sure that you are doing that task with an adult please. Okay, other tasks for you to have a go at this week then, you have got the art home learning, we've had some stunning pieces of artwork coming through when you've had a go at your um, drawings of birds last week. This week it's all about sunflowers and some of you might recognise this piece of artwork here, it's a very famous one by the artist Vincent van Gogh. Uh, lots of information about the piece of artwork and then some instructions about how you can have a go at creating your own piece of sunflower artwork as well. Uh, then your computing this week. Uh, it follows on from last week where you found different computers in your home and this week you're thinking about different apps or software that you can use in your home as well. I want you to think about how long you use them for, the positives and the negatives of those apps. There's an example here um, from Mr Roberts about Spotify um, but you might want to think about your the apps that you use but also the things that maybe mum and dad use or brothers and sisters use to help them with their learning or their work. Um, and maybe you might have a little bit of a comparison of the positives and the negatives of the different things that people are using around the home. OK, please do keep sharing all of your fantastic learning with us. Uh, we'd love to keep seeing it. Um, and we hope that you really enjoy the different learning opportunities we've got for you this week. Speak to you again soon. Bye.